Howdy, folks. I'm Sir Isaac the Fig Newton. I'm Amber. And here I am to tell you about why I think things fall down. Because they're heavy. Yeah. <laughs> what about light things? We all know that light doesn't fall. So, uh... <laughs> speaking of light things falling down... Have you uh, played your Wordle today? <laughs> so today I got very, very, very lucky, as you can see, and I got my uh, two out of six. So not too bad. It took me three times this time around. Yeah, Ember was at three, but I mean, like, you have to be extraordinarily lucky to get it at two, I really feel like. Like, there just needs to be, like, either you're cheating, like some people. I did not cheat when I got it at two yesterday. <laughs> or... You I've just... saved all mine, so you can go look and see. <laughs> I believe her. I'm teasing. I am kidding. I'm not. I'm not seriously suggesting that Amber would cheat. Please, please. Uh, if I were to do something like that, and then suddenly I were to disappear one day, just I can't make you disappear. <laughs> I need you to make me food. All right. Let's get on to the Reddit. Our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for expecting my adult daughter to pay me back what she owes? So, I'm a 48-year-old male and my daughter is a 21-year-old female, Aria, and abandoned us, her stepmother, younger half-sister, and me when she was age 15 to go live with my enabling ex-wife, Sandra, and her husband. Until then... We had 50-50 custody, but Sandra has always been less strict than me. She always let Arya do what she wanted to and never had any home rules. She also buys Arya everything that she wants so that she will live with her. Sandra in the same town as where Arya's home school was while I live 25 miles away. So one of my rules was that if she wants to meet up with a friend there, meaning that I had to drive there, the next time they meet was her friend's turn to come. If the friend's parent didn't want to drive the kid here, then Arya wasn't allowed to meet them again while she was with me. Everything was fine that way for years. The major fallout happened in the last year of high school when she was 15. Maybe she's a child genius? Maybe he means their first year of high school. Yeah. <laughs> She went on a trip to another country with her school and didn't bother to send more than a couple of texts when she was away for five days. So I, t I decided to ground her because she had to learn a little respect and show some love for her family. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Let me, let me get this straight. Your reaction to her not, you know, being like... She texted you a couple of times to let you know that she was like alive and well... What did you expect her? How often do you expect her to text you? Like, yeah, well, I went on school shifts when I was 16 and or 15 and 17. And like, I don't think I talked to my parents more than a handful of times because it's a school trip. So yeah. like, if anything goes wrong, the school has to notify you. Yeah. And like the phone works two ways, right? So, like, if you, you can always text her and be like, hey, I'm really wanting to make sure that you're all right. Just text me back. Right. I don't know. She insisted that she had sent messages to her mother, but we had barely heard from her. She never had a lot of friends, but she had been invited to some popular girl's birthday party. This was my punishment, not going to that party after forgetting about her family. Oh, wow. So, uh, so that's an adequate form of punishment. I can't imagine why she wanted to go and live with her mom now. Yeah. She got upset and started calling her mother to come pick her up, but it was illegal to get her if it was my week. Plus, she wanted to go to her mom's because it would lift my punishment and let her go to the party. Her mom came by at the end of the week, and I told Arya that she didn't have to come back if she didn't want to. I waited, but I heard nothing from her again. Her sister kept asking me why she didn't come back, and I didn't know how to explain to her that she didn't love us. Oh, wow. That's... Yeah. <laughs> and that she preferred staying with her mother, her parties, and her free of rules life. I don't know that, that she has a free of rules life. It's probably right. just not, like, a draconian. 
Over the years, we've communicated through lawyers because Sandra has zero interest on helping me get my daughter back. She finally has her to herself. They've been demanding that I pay for child support, even though she's 21 years old. I have to pay for that and for half of her college expenses by law. When Aria turned 18, an adult, I started adding up everything I had to pay in an Excel spreadsheet that I sent to Sandra when I updated it so that she would know what damage she is doing to our daughter. I expected Arya to pay her debt, but I gave Sandra the option to pay it for her, which she refused. We are now at $18,000. This is $18,000 that he is legally mandated to pay for her. Yeah. But it's her debt. Yeah. Arya has been trying to get in touch again, and I told her that we can't fix the emotional part unless we fix the money part first. Because all relationships swing uh, depend on the money aspect of it. She needs to prove me to me that she doesn't only care about the money. Sandra says that I'm a jerk, but I think that she is since she has done nothing but try to take my daughter away. And she finally has what she wants. So am I the jerk? Yes, unequivocally, yes. So, I mean, I guess like, so she's trying to get in back into contact with him, right? And is claiming, and he's claiming that she just is in it for the money, right? But the thing I don't get is like she already has the money, right? So she's just literally trying to get back in touch with him because she wants to. She has an yeah. invested interest in, you know, having a relationship with her father. And like he is, he's treating this like, like he gave her the option to move out, right? Yeah. He literally said, oh, hey, if you don't want to come back, don't come back. And so she took him up on it. Yeah. And then he's like, she abandoned <laughs> us. And it's like, no, dude, you were just a controlling jerk. And she didn't want to live with that anymore. Like, I mean, I think that this whole situation is sort of a little sad and a little unreasonable. I'd, I'd be curious what you folks have to say. If you think that he has the right to start charging her money and telling her that she needs to pay her back, him back after 20, after 18. Well, I, I mean... I, it's, uh, child support is sometimes mandated like if someone didn't pay in the early years um like they'll mandate it for longer and stuff yeah, like yeah. that like um because i've heard of people who like their kids get to be adults but they never paid like the back child support yeah so they still have to like keep paying exactly if he's legally mandated to keep paying child support like again this isn't first of all your child doesn't owe you for existing yeah they didn't ask to exist you're the one who chose to bring them into this world um, so to be like, she owes me because I am paying to support her and help her with her education. Like that's what, that's called being a parent. Yeah. So I just think this whole situation is so absurd. Yeah, I think so too. It's pretty absurd. Our next story is, am I the jerk for being obnoxious when my mother-in-law showed me pictures of my husband's exes pretending we were playing smash or pass? My mother-in-law doesn't like me much. I don't think. I was visiting her for the holidays, and she was showing me a photo book of pictures of my husband. I feel like she doesn't care for me and purposely looks for things to make me insecure. She showed me a page with a couple of pictures of my husband and other girls. All very couple photos, a prom photo, a picture of him kissing a lady, and a picture of him on a boat with a different lady in his lap. And she made a comment saying that his first girlfriend was so pretty and also a Christian. Okay, I think I see where the resentment's coming. <laughs> As a joke, I said, smash, pointing at one of the pictures, then at another, pass, and at another, smash. And she was like, what? And I was like, wait, what was the game? Smash or pass? And she again goes, what? All confused? And I said, oh, we're not playing smash or pass? She asked what that is, and I said, oh, it's a game where you decide if people are hot. Like, if you think they're hot enough, you'd sleep with them, you say smash, and otherwise you say pass. I figured that's what you were going for, talking about how hot this chick is. She said she didn't understand, and I was like, come on, it's fun. She said that it was really inappropriate of me, and I said it was just a bit of fun. She got frustrated and asked if I was serious. I said, oh, not literally. It's not like I'm actually trying to sleep with anyone. I thought we were just talking about who's hottest. She said that this was really wrong of me, and I said I thought she was trying to gossip about which of his exes were hot and which are not from what she said. She slammed the photo book shut and called me childish, which is fair, like I'd kind of stolen the joke from TikTok after all. Am I the jerk for being obnoxious about my mother-in-law showing me pictures of his exes? Yeah, I mean, this was really in poor taste of the mom. Just being like, I'm going to rub in. It's it's really interesting. Like the moment she turned this around on the mom, how she reacted and said, oh, you're the one who's being immature. 
Yeah, so I don't think Opie did anything wrong here. I do wonder what Opie's husband is doing in all of this. Like, presumably he knows his mom doesn't like her, and, like, is he, like... Yeah, well, the question is, like, if he's not around right now, like, right. if he's, like, out and stuff like that, but if he's sitting in the corner just being, like, melting away into the couch, <laughs> then, I mean... Well, I'm assuming he's not here for yeah. this, but, like, if Opie reports to him, like, why would he leave her alone with his mom? Well, he might have thought that his mom was going to play nice because, like, he's she's played nice with all these other girls before. Yeah. And I think it's less like she and OP do not get along and she's just trying to, like, drive her away. Yeah, well, so... I think she's trying to drive her away. I'm just saying, well, like, I don't know the situation with the husband because it's not really mentioned anywhere. Yeah. But, like, if he isn't stepping in, like, when his mom does stuff like this and he knows about it, like, because he should be shutting his mom down oh, if, yeah. if he knows his mom is actively trying to sabotage his relationship. Oh, for sure, for sure. So. Before we go to our next story, what do you have for tea, Amber? And before you answer, we'll let people take a second to guess what we have. We yes. both have the same tea, so I'll let you guess. So, Amber, what kind of tea do you got? Mint. <laughs> so if you guess mint, I'll give you five Brian bucks. <laughs> so let me know what you folks are having for uh, a nice drink. Our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for upgrading to a business class ticket while my wife sits in economy? <laughs> oh my goodness. So I'm a 25-year-old male and my wife is a 24-year-old female and we are going to the United States from Japan for a month for vacation. And when we booked the tickets, we initially thought that we were going to be sitting next to each other. But I had the option to upgrade my seat to business with Miles, and I did. Well, my wife is not too happy about that because she wanted us to sit together on the 12-hour flight. Hmm, why? Why would she possibly... Why would your wife want to sit next to you on a 12-hour flight? But it's an overnight, so we're not going to be sleep... So we're going to be sleeping the whole flight, so I didn't think it mattered. I told her that. And she got upset because she thinks I chose business class over her, and that's rude, apparently. I said to her that she's just jealous in a teasing way, and she got upset and told me to ask the airlines if I can switch my seat back to economy. I said, heck no, because I'm not going to miss my opportunity to sit in business class, which looks amazing, by the way, so you are literally choosing business class over your <laughs> wife. Your wife apparently doesn't look amazing as business class. <laughs> Look up ANA the room. In my eyes, it's just a 12 hour flight, and it doesn't matter if I sit next to my wife or not. <laughs> Is it, if it's really bad, though, I still have a week before my flight, maybe to get it changed. Am I the jerk? Edit. Yeah, I'm the jerk. I'm buying her an upgrade to sit next to me in business. I offered to switch seats, but she really wanted to sit next to me. I guess. Edit two, since many are asking, they were my miles, and I couldn't use them to upgrade her seat. All right. Well, what do you think? Jerk or not the jerk? Yeah, I think OP was being a jerk here. Like, if I had to go on a flight, I definitely would want to be seated with Ryan. Like, I'd be more concerned about getting to sit next to someone I know rather than, like, what accommodations I had. Yeah. And, you know, I feel for Amber. I know that she would want to sit next to Brian, but there is no Brian here. It's, uh, uh... Sir Fig Isaac Newton, who's also going to teach you about gravity. So I just want to make it, point that out to everyone just for a moment. <laughs> On second thought, maybe I'll just take the business class. Uh, and apparently Amber is now going to take business class and I'm going to sit on the wing. <laughs> so, I mean... I can understand why you would want to sit next to your partner while you're on a 12-hour flight, even if you're sleeping. Especially, you know, if you get put next to somebody who might be a little bit of an unsavory character. Yeah, like, you, this is the thing. It's like, you never know, like, how people will be. And, like, you could be sat next to a creep or yeah. someone who's just, like, invades your personal space. Or, like, there's all kinds of things that, like, you may just not want to sit near them. Yeah, or someone who might kick your seat the entire time. <laughs> yeah, and maybe there's, like, a child right behind or right, right, right beside you who's yeah. just, like, bam, bam, beat up everything. Yeah. Screaming and flailing. So, yeah, I mean, I certainly can understand why OP would want to... Uh, I still understand why OP's wife would want to sit next to him. All right, our last story is... 
am I the jerk for accidentally sleeping on the couch with my husband? Yes. No. Yes. No. I'm a 24-year-old female. My husband's a 24-year-old male. And he and I were visiting my family. My husband, the kids, and I were getting ready to go to our room for bed when my parents started acting really awkward, like something was off. Dun, dun, dun. I asked them what was wrong, and my mom quietly told me that my husband should sleep on the couch in the living room. I was a bit shocked because why? Apparently, my dad doesn't feel comfortable. <laughs> I called her and my dad weird and told my husband to ignore them. Apparently, your your husband is a good luck charm, and so I think what it boils down to, OP, is that he really just didn't feel comfortable with having him sleep anywhere but on the the sacred couch to bring charm and good luck to the rest of the house <laughs> we finally put our kids to sleep and are getting ready to sleep when my mom bars into the room while we're changing and says that she doesn't want us in the same room alone in her house they, they have kids like <laughs> what's gonna happen <laughs> my husband is freaking terrified at this point because he was in the middle of changing so he leaves for the couch and my mom says she's sorry but she's not in the mood to deal with my dad's complaining all night I find out that my younger sister, 21-year-old female, and her husband have slept in the same room at their house multiple times, and she's never said anything. And she goes, well, your husband is white, so your dad feels weird. I was over it, so I said fine. I got up at like 4 a.m. to drink some water, and I saw my husband wide awake just lying on the couch. He said the couch is uncomfortable AF, which, yes, it is. So I sat down next to him, and we both accidentally fell asleep. I woke up later to my mom freaking out. She was whisper yelling so she doesn't wake up my dad and asked if we're that codependent on each other that we can't spend one night alone. I tried explaining that it was a mistake, but she kept calling me disrespectful and said that I was selfish, etc. I was upset, but my son called for me, so we ended our conversation. Now I'm wondering if I was really the jerk in the situation. My mom says I am because I was being selfish, disrespectful, and completely disregarded how difficult her life would have become if my dad found out. Maybe yeah. find a new husband, mom. Uh, my whole thing is that it was an accident. I'm 24 and my dad is being weird and my sister's husband doesn't have to do this, so why does mine? Am I the jerk? Uh, my family and I are South Asian. Yes, I know a lot of this has to do with my husband being white and them being racist slash prejudice. Um, and then... There's a bunch of updates about the weird remark, but the only other important, I think, edit is we live over eight hours away. It was snowing heavily and the roads would have been icy and pitch black. It was after 11 p.m. My sons are two and three and the nearest hotel is pretty far away. Not to mention my husband and I had been driving for literal hours and we were completely exhausted. Um, so, yeah, they, they have a good reason for staying and not backing out. At yeah, that point. I think at, at a certain point, OP, you and your husband need to put your foot down and be like, listen, we're not going to come and visit you and you're not going to see the kids. If you don't let, if you don't acknowledge that our relationship is a real relationship, and that we're you know not, you're, you don't stop your games here. Absolutely, and like it seems like they were completely taken aback by this because yeah. like uh, Opie's sister and her husband sleep together all the time, and they just assume that all sleep in one room. Um, but yeah, definitely in the future, don't have overnight visits at their house unless they are willing to like yeah know. and no, i mean i guess this is probably the first time they've had an overnight visit but yeah. which is odd considering they have a couple of kids now well, but it's right? been a pandemic well that's true and i mean it could just be that like they got married at the beginning of the pandemic or a little before it and just never were able to visit eight hours is a bit of a drive you know um so and they may have just been doing day trips like it may not because eight hours is still like you don't necessarily stay overnight Although, <laughs> i don't like, know about that never mind <laughs> you would yeah, do 16 no. hours worth of driving yeah, at that the is minimum a lot of driving you would do like eight, eight hours of driving down then yeah, you would well, be, be like the parents stay with them or something yeah leave at them and then uh drive back and then go yeah. to sleep <laughs> that's a good point i just like i, I forgot how much eight hours is <laughs> So, I really honestly can't blame OP in this situation. I think that the parents need to, like, get over themselves. Mm -hmm. Or not. Like, if they're going to be racist against your husband, then they don't need to be part of your family, right? Yeah, like, don't... If they're going to be racist, you don't need to be bringing them around your husband and kids. They yeah. don't need to pick up on that. Yeah, exactly. But definitely not the jerk for accidentally falling asleep on the couch with your husband. You wouldn't have been the jerk if you had intentionally fallen asleep on the couch with your husband. Yeah. Well, and then one more note here, right? Like, the mom says it's disrespectful, right, to, like, go against the wishes of their house. But you know what's disrespectful? Being racist. <laughs> Being racist. 
All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Happy Friday, Junior. Happy Friday, Junior. If you liked it, consider giving it a like. And if you disliked it, consider giving it a dislike. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks to Amber for joining me today. Thank you for having me. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.